Hey, welcome back. We're here with Michael Bly from the Firebase team, and we're picking up the second half of his interview right now. Michael, how did you end up on the Firebase team? Back in 2012, I actually founded a startup called DivShot, and I had been working in sort of the open source world for a while and trying to build things for developers, and I wanted to see if I could do more there. So the first thing we built was sort of a drag and drop tool for building bootstrap HTML. Unlike other WYSIWYG tools, the idea was this would export sort of clean, usable HTML. Um, and as we were building that out, we were looking for a place to host the static content, so just the HTML, JavaScript, and CSS that would talk to the various APIs that we used. And there wasn't really anything there. So we kind of pivoted the company towards static hosting for developers, which, um, as it turns out, was very similar to Firebase hosting. And mm. so uh, the opportunity sort of came along for me to join the Firebase team with DivShot, you know, merge the two products together and make something more ambitious because Firebase obviously isn't just hosting, it's this entire development platform. Yeah, and so yeah. I've been working in the developer tool space for a long time and it's just been really exciting seeing how everything has developed. I was in a similar situation. So I was at a startup called Pulse.io and we were making uh, mobile application performance monitoring tools. Mm -hmm. And then my startup, I didn't co-found it, but my startup was acquired, uh, and that became what is known today as Firebase Performance Monitoring. Oh. So we had actually very similar yeah. paths into the Firebase <laughs> world. So uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, someone who's shared that sort of developer-focused prior product experience. Very cool. So Michael, what are you watching on TV these days? Uh, I mean, I watch a lot of stuff. I'm really pumped for the new season of Westworld. Yeah, I watch Westworld, loved it. Um, I heard they're doing something different this year. It's not just Westworld, but they're adding like another new world or something. Is that yeah, I don't know. I mean, lots of mystery. Like, I think that you know they can't say too much or they're giving away the mystery. Yeah. But I guess. It's really interesting because the first season is just sort of this really like encapsulated, meticulously crafted thing. And then it's going to be really interesting to see where they take it from here. Mm -hmm. And it is itself kind of a game, right? I mean, one of the characters yeah. treats it like a, not like an escape room type game, but it's it has gamish qualities. Yeah, too. definitely. The other thing about that show is it also uh, kind of puts a spotlight on what happens when you have really sophisticated AI. You know, <laughs> yeah. and there's always that, you know, is, what's going to happen with very sophisticated AI or the robot's going to take over, they're going to think for themselves. And I think it like touches on that just a little bit. Yeah. Now, I remember you tweeted about uh, Halt and Catch Fire. Oh, yeah, that's a great show, too. I love that. And I think it really captured like the spirit of computing in the 80s. Yeah, that show, I think, for one thing, I was really surprised it just got better from season to season, which mm -hmm. doesn't always happen with TV. One of the things that I thought rang really true about it is the way that like even though this is set over a period of decades, like these people sort of keep looping back and running into each other. And I've found that to really be true in my career. It's sort of oh. you meet certain people and like you really like click with them or you do something that, you know, is important to you together. And then like those people are there throughout your career. You know, there are people who work at Google who also worked at like Intridia, the first job that I got like mm. just out of college. And like it's just weird how everything sort of converges and it feels like a very small world. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed that some of my prior colleagues would look me up on Google and say, hey, you remember me? And I'm like, yeah. of course I do. <laughs> Welcome to Google. <laughs> it is kind of a small world and a lot does converge here, I think. How did you end up getting into computers? I'm very curious. Uh, I mean, I've been fascinated by them my whole life. My parents tell me I don't remember, but I was like two years old and like climbing up onto the desk and trying to put floppy disks into an IBM XT. Like a lot of kids, I got super into video games and how do they work? How can you make them? Um, and over time, you know, I started picking up programming from that. I wanted to really be able to do a lot just by myself, and that's sort of how I got into the web and programming for the web, because I felt like one person could do so much. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's kind of similar to how I picked up computing. Although I don't think I was two. There were no there were no floppy disks when I was two. <laughs> but there were certainly floppy disks when I was six or seven. And uh, yeah, I, I played around with Apple II computers at school and, and at the library. And, Oregon Trail? Yeah, <laughs> yes. I've watched interviews by the people who created it talking about their story of creating it. And I just found that fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Love that game. Well, Michael, thanks so much for being on the show. Yeah, my it was pleasure. A pleasure to finally meet you and talk about video games and TV and <laughs> stuff. And thank you for tuning in. I uh, hope you enjoyed this interview. Be sure to subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube to get more great video content like this. I'll see you next time.
is my code safe? It's a yes or no question, Michael. Yes or no. Look, man, I, I told you I wasn't going to answer this question. Just a yes or a no. That's all I want. That actually gets asked. <laughs>